the biggest business owner myth. That's what we're here to talk about today, but we're also going to discuss the potential pitfalls of this myth, and perhaps most importantly, how you can use this information to identify and build a successful business of your own. I think you might be surprised to see what we find. So when we think of the most successful founders, what's the one commonality we find? So what do all of these infamous founders have in common? Besides changing the world and, uh, well, make a lot of money, a lot of money in the process. They were young. Harvard Business Review wanted to examine just this. They did a study to look at the average age of a successful founder. What was the average age of a founder for a successful startup? And they found what we might expect. The average age was quite young. Wait a second. So the, the average age of a successful founder was 45 and it plateaus in one's late 50s? I mean, that's just, that's just impossible because I mean, uh, you would be 15 years disqualified mathematically from making the Forbes 30 under 30 list. So you certainly couldn't be innovative uh, or have much of really anything of merit to give the world if you were 45, because you, again, you couldn't make the Forbes list. So we got to look at this data here. Now, why is this so important? At least why is this more important than just the information of knowing that the average successful founder was 45? It's more important than that because there's more to this. Deeply embedded within these statistics are personal stories. Personal stories that had one key factor when it came to success, and that was experience. But uh, how do you get experience for a startup? Because that's a paradox. Well, most founders are not founders in the way that you think. And I realized this in my time working with them as clients. What makes founders the public sees as famous and newsworthy is their rarity and appeal. America loves something truly novel and youthful, even if it is kind of full of shit. Uh, to be frank, you know, Frank was a good example of this. They were full of shit. Uh, but the media loved her because she was young and it seemed like this rare new business. But what I found, you know, after working with quite literally hundreds of business owners, sitting down with them, learning about their lives, seeing their finances, is it helps to think about this in terms of intersections. Within any given domain, there are seemingly an infinite number of intersections. And this really occurred to mathematicians first as a concept with infinity, right? So you have zero to infinity. And then you also have zero to one, and there's an infinite amount of numbers between zero and one. You could have 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.111, we could keep on going, right? That's infinity technically, but it's different than zero to infinity. It's a different variation of infinity. And very similarly within any given domain, there are an infinite amount of theoretical businesses. This concept and how it relates to business opportunities really struck me is I was meeting an engineer about eight years ago who was looking at leaving his corporate job to start building vans, custom travel vans. Uh, and at the time, this sounded like financial suicide. Well, let's just actually let him tell the story. And it was right at the beginning of COVID where the RV market was booming. Revenue, my first year in business, 2017, was like like 180 grand. That's, you know, <laughs> after materials and labor and everything like that. There wasn't much left at the end of the, at the, end of the year. Last year, we did 6.7 million. We've got 20, we had 23 employees at the end of the year, and we were in 20,000 square feet. So went to school for civil engineering at University of Portland, and then immediately went into construction management. I got kind of a lay of the land of how to manage a project and bid things and really, um, you know, see something through to the end from design to uh, completion. Uh, while I was working there, I built myself a van because I saw one and I was like, man, I think it's sweet. Sold it for a profit and did it again and did it again until somebody asked me to build them one. And within about three months, I'd quit my job and I was doing this full time. What advice would you have to somebody that is maybe interested in someday starting their own business? You know, don't just send it and get like 
a seventy thousand dollar sprinter van to start your business you know start with something that's twenty three hundred bucks you know a couple thousand bucks uh it's not the end of the world and you learn a lot from it so dustin had identified a domain selling cars and realized it was lacking a regional intersection custom travel vans in an otherwise outdoorsy realm being the pacific northwest now if he had just tried to enter the domain that probably would have been quite difficult i mean Cars are nothing new. There's been one legitimate automaker in the last few decades being Tesla. However, uh, there was a shortage of custom van builds, at least for mid-level buyers in this case, and certainly a pretty big demand. And he had realized there was an opportunity there by building it himself. And in my case, there were advisors who just specialized in retirement, but that just seemed far too general to me. I had done a college night. There were hundreds of parents that showed up. I realized there was no one at the intersection of saving and planning for college. So I went after that. But, you know, one of the problems is when we're passionate about something, we will craft narratives that curate mirages, mirages that, you know, can really feel like a true opportunity or intersection. But we know that not every intersection is a worthwhile venture. For example, you could be passionate about coffee, open up a new coffee shop here in Seattle, give it a fun name, give it some decor, even have you know maybe some novel Colombian roast, and you still might not be successful. But with a lack of margins, considerable competition, because, well, this is Seattle, a lot of people drink coffee here, uh, you might, again, not be successful because the odds are stacked against you. Even though you're maybe pouring 100 hours a week into this project, even though you're maybe passionate about coffee, it might not be different enough it might not be a profitable intersection. And this is where our intuition can really blind us to these realities. Just because something is fun does not mean that it's advisable. You know, for example, you might have the vague idea of just starting a business for the sake of starting a business. You might just be passionate about the idea of starting a business. But without any real consideration of the numbers, you, know, you could be getting in hot water. And this will present itself at some point to you in your life as some form of an opportunity. For example, uh, this is how it could go down. I just had a friend reach out to me. He said, this flower shop is for sale. I can buy it for 900,000 and it's revenueing about 1.9 million a year, has about 1.5 million expenses. So I would profit about 400,000 a year. So I've looked at probably a hundred of these in my career and the numbers even can be misleading here because it will present itself as straightforward and likely at some point you'll be presented with something like this. Some logical questions that I would ask here, what role did the owners play in the community as far as sales were concerned? They'd probably been there for a couple decades. How big were those relationships as far as sales? Why are they walking away from an easy $400,000 a year? Why not just keep enjoying this cash cow and just manage the managers, step in every couple of weeks to say hello and collect $400,000? Why walk away from that? Opportunities like this will always present themselves as more turnkey than they are. And don't get me wrong, you know, buying an intersection is definitely a thing. Like that can happen and it can be profitable. It's just that you lack the key ingredient that we found with the Harvard study. And that is experience. You don't know what it's like running this business. If something could go sideways and you have to step in for 100 hours in a week, how passionate are you about that with flowers? And do you even really know what to do? Uh, I'd have to assume that there's more to this because we take a step into anything, we find more complexity. Now, uh, I want to be clear here that you don't just need to identify an intersection to be successful in business. In fact, you can do the exact same thing that your predecessors did and be wildly successful. It's what we call horizontal growth. Uh, you know, realtors, mortgage brokers, financial planners are a prime example of this. If you just identify the one to two activities within any given domain that lead to success, you can increase your at-bats to where you can be more successful than an individual, a more talented individual that has a higher batting average than you. The problem is uh, just because something is simple doesn't mean that it's easy. It might be simple to understand what these activities are, but it's likely simultaneously painful to follow through with these activities. Nobody enjoys a 90 some percent rejection rate and living below the poverty line, but 
You can grow this way in business horizontally, likely in just about any domain. It's just that at some point, likely through gaining experience in that field, an intersection will present itself as a form of a shortcut to where maybe you don't have to be knocking on doors, making all these calls, you know, uncomfortably asking for referrals for the rest of your life. You can maybe just focus more on the money-making activities, like actually just closing the business. And my story is an example of this, but I wouldn't have known to go after that intersection if I did not have the experience. But anyone can gain that experience within any given field. Quick side note on this, I'm always slightly terrified of someone that says, well, you know, I just can't work for anybody else or you know, nine to five jobs are a scam or a waste of time. Nine to five jobs are often where you find that experience to see the opportunity. It's not a waste of time. It might teach you what you don't want to do or what you know within that business they shouldn't be doing. So I wouldn't think of this as a waste of time if you currently are working for somebody else or if you're looking at the prospect of working for somebody else. It should be obvious now that there still are intersections or businesses to be found. Secrets, if you will. There's, for some reason, this lingering belief that there are somehow less secrets today than there used to be. I don't know if that's because knowledge is so readily accessible or what, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Dig into a domain you care about and the secrets will present themselves to you. Hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if you haven't and take care.